Lord Lancaster of Kimbolton. To ask the question, standing in my name on the order paper and declare my interest as Deputy Colonel Commandant Brigade of Gurkhas. Minister Lord Goldsmith. My Lords, the UK will continue to donate COVID-19 vaccines to bilateral partners in line with the Prime Minister's commitment at the G7 Summit in June 2021. The primary objective is to promote the economic development and welfare of recipient countries, though we will also seek to strengthen key relationships in line with the integrated review as a secondary benefit. Decisions are taken on a case-by-case basis when vaccines are available to be donated. Lord Lancaster of Kimbolton. Can I seek my noble friend's reassurance on two points? Firstly, that we will donate, not destroy, surplus vaccines. And secondly, that he will look again at the request from the Government of Nepal for a bilateral donation, not least so that we can fulfil our commitment uh, and our duty of care to vaccinating some 30,000 British Army Gurkha veterans who live there. My Lords, the UK donated 130,000 COVID vaccines to Nepal in August, um, recognising the historic link between our two countries. Since the beginning of the pandemic, our embassy in Kathmandu has reprioritised over £40 million of development aid to help address the medical and socio-economic consequences of the pandemic. And in response to Nepal's second wave of infections, the UK has delivered an additional package of support, including donating 260 ventilator machines, thousands of pieces of personal protective equipment, and constructing an oxygen plant in Kathmandu, among other things. Lord Bishop of Durham. Uh, In light of the new Omicron variant that has dominated news over the weekend, my colleague Archbishop Tarbo Makoba of Cape Town urged those of us in rich countries over the weekend to do better at narrowing inequality of vaccination rates. 7% in Africa, 70% in Europe. We must acknowledge that this virus knows no national boundaries, will spread, mutate and return to us in the way that we're seeing it doing so. So we need a global approach, not simply bilateral. Will Her Majesty's Government commit to redoubling efforts to seek a truly global approach to vaccine donation to ensure people in all nations are safer? My Lords, the Government strongly agrees, and and we're committed to supporting rapid, equitable um, access to safe and effective vaccines through multilateral cooperation to end the acute phase of this pandemic. And that's why the UK supports the COVAX facility. We're one of the first countries to do so. Uh, It is, as he knows, a multilateral mechanism that supports access by pooling resources to accelerate the development, manufacture, and delivery of vaccines. And over 537 million vaccines have so far been delivered globally through that scheme. My Lords, I appreciate my noble friend, the Minister, setting out what the UK has done, but when you look at vaccination rates in low-income countries, it's clear that the UK and indeed all high-income countries have just not done enough. Could my noble friend, the Minister, say how many vaccines the UK has drawn down from the COVAX facility and how many vaccines have been destroyed as close to or past their use-by date? The... um COVAX, as as an Honourable Baroness will know, was designed to work for both high- and middle-income countries. This allowed for the pooling of investments behind early vaccine candidates. The UK has procured 539,370 doses of the vaccine, of the Pfizer vaccine, through COVAX, when that was delivered earlier this year. And these doses helped the NHS deliver our vaccination programme as quickly as possible. No further doses have been received by the UK from COVAX. And I'm afraid uh, I can't answer her question in relation to the waste of unused vaccines, but clearly it is in all of our interests and a key priority that we minimise any potential waste. Lord Villamoria. My Lords, in May this year, I chaired the B7 as president of CBI, and Dr. Geetha Gopinath, the chief economist of the IMF, spoke at it and sent me a report in May called A Proposal to End the COVID-19 Pandemic at a cost of $50 billion to vaccinate the whole world by the first half of 2022. If one company, the Serum Institute of India, can produce 1 billion vaccines, surely the minister agrees and the government agrees that we should follow the recommendations of this report and pull together and end this pandemic because until we're all safe, no one is safe. The the noble lord is absolutely right that until we're all safe, no one's safe. And that's why the UK has been if not the biggest, certainly one of the biggest contributors to uh, to the COVAX scheme. Uh, Making vaccines available globally, as Noble Lord says, not only helps end the pandemic in developing countries, but it will also reduce the threat posed by vaccine-resistant variants emerging in areas with large-scale outbreaks, and that, of course, threatens the UK. So it's in all of our interests that we do so. 
Unrest Secretary Barty? My Lords, it's a bitter irony indeed that tomorrow's ministerial meeting of the WTO has had to be cancelled indefinitely because of a variant that could have been prevented had we all collaborated sooner in relation to, for example, the TRIPS waiver. Given that an overwhelming majority of the R&D money spent on vaccines came from public and philanthropic funds, isn't it time, my Lords, that the European Union stopped blocking the TRIPS waiver and that Her Majesty's Government sided with the United States, with India, with South Africa and much of the Global South so that we don't just donate, we collaborate over patents and know-how. My Lords, the, the, the UK is engaging intensively and constructively in the TRIPS waiver debate. We continue to be open to all ideas that have a positive impact on vaccine production and distribution. A, a, a balanced and effective intellectual property regime has proved invaluable in this crisis, as in others, uh, in supporting innovation and collaboration. But in the meantime, we know we need to continue to push ahead with pragmatic action now, including voluntary licensing and technology transfer agreements. Thoughts? My Lords, did the Minister have the chance to listen to last night's broadcast by South African President Cyril Ramaphosa in which he said the Omicron variant should be a wake-up call to the world that vaccine inequality cannot be allowed to continue until everyone is vaccinated we should expect more variants. Instead of prohibiting travel, the rich countries should support the efforts of developing countries to access, to access and manufacture enough doses for their people. In light of those comments, Will the government convene an urgent meeting of the G7 uh, to tackle this issue of, of the TRIPS waiver? We don't have time to wait, but also to agree an economic support uh, package for southern African economies, which will be devastated by this travel ban. Uh, my Lords, I didn't hear the broadcast, but, but, I, but I've heard the, the summary of the message, and, and I don't think anyone pretends it's an either-or decision, either uh, blocking flights temporarily into this country or uh, enabling the widespread vaccination of uh, vulnerable populations. And, and uh, our, our view is that both are necessary, as a, as certainly as, as an immediate um, term step. Uh, G7 has been dominated by discussions uh, around this issue, and that will no doubt continue. Not here. Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, uh, too many of the vaccines gifted to the poorest countries are within 12 weeks of their use-by dates. These short lead times between donation and expiry show why a strengthened G20 and a month-to-month -month delivery timetable is now urgent. So will the government be following the Swiss example of expeditious transferring of delivery dates with their recent transfer to COVAX? We can act now and have an effect now. My Lords, the UK doesn't hold a stockpile of COVID vaccines. We manage the supply chain um, carefully. Um, but for all bilateral donations, we sought assurances that recipients have the capacity to roll out the quantity of doses in line with the national vaccination programs and ahead of their expiry date. And for donations through COVAX, the UK is working closely both with COVAX and its partners like UNICEF to allocate vaccines according to need to facilitate the rapid delivery of doses and to maximise the shelf life available to recipients. Honest cousins. My Lords, returning to the issue posed by the noble Baroness Lady Chakrabarti, the WTO's um, waiver, the TRIPS waiver, was activated for antiretroviral drugs at the height of the HIV AIDS crisis. So could the noble Lord, the Minister, say exactly what the blockages are at the moment? Because this would be one very good way of getting COVID vaccines much more rapidly produced and distributed in the countries that need them most. The, the Noble Baroness is right, uh, and that is why the UK is uh, engaging uh, actively in this debate. I will ask my colleagues across government in whose department this sits to provide an update, which I'll share with the Noble Baroness. Baroness Fall. My Lords, only 2% of people in low-income countries have received a vaccine, woefully short of what is needed if we're going to put this behind us. And I would echo the point made by Lord Oates. We still are president of the G7. We should use that power to convene another meeting, a global summit on vaccines, and I'd ask the Minister to put this to the Government. I'm very happy to make that commitment. I will put this to colleagues across Government.